Hey guys, well today's episode is going to be about hourglasses. So we've got vintage, Victorian, so I'm just looking at the styles of hourglasses. I don't like these kinds that go straight up and are flat on top, I like the full round ones. I think I'm going to go with this style here, but I think I like the idea of the little caps like this. Maybe something just like this. Something simple. Something I can use and show wood grain and some metal grain and some little like rivets. Yeah, I think this one will do. So let's flip over to Blender. I like to try to keep the default cube just because it's kind of a respect thing, but I actually don't need it in this one. Before I get rid of the default cube, I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna change my units to Imperial and we're gonna go by inches all right I do that because in my head I can picture things better in inches because that's the way I was raised over here in the United States when we get rid of the default cube I'm gonna do a shift a mesh UV sphere now this UV sphere is quite large I mean it's got a 39 inch radius so I mean that's like almost 80 inches in diameter that's huge I mean that's over six foot tall right so we're gonna drop this down and we're gonna go with a three inch radius I'm gonna zoom back into there again okay so this is the sphere that I want now the one thing I don't like about these spheres is the little triangles at the bottom these triangles are gonna be deleted so they won't matter so this is a six inch diameter and what I would like to do is I'd like to pull this thing around to get the shape I want. So to do that, I'm going to move it down three inches. And then I'm going to tab into it and I'm going to replace these. Get rid of that um, vertice there. I'm going to replace those triangles. Now this is visual clipping, so I need to go over to view, and I'm going to start my clip at 0 .01, so you don't see that. I'm going to highlight this thing, and I'm going to check out this grid fill, see if the grid fill gives me what I want. What's it look like if I do a subdivide on it? Let's uh, do that, and then throw a smooth shade on there. I just want to see what it looks like tab off for a smooth shade see it's got a but then again it kind of would it's gonna be sitting on a board so it's not gonna really matter matter of fact I'm going to do a loop cut in here like so and then I want to go to the front view I'm gonna move this over because we don't need these yet give everybody some more visual space I am going to high def right now. I'm going to add a modifier called cast. And cast is pretty neat. We're going to put that in front of the subdivide. Um, with cast, you take a shape and you turn it into another shape. So right now it's set to sphere and the factor is how much it casts into the sphere. Of course we got to come out of edit mode to do this. See now the bottom looks round. So you can cast it so like right there it looks rounded I don't know if we can get to go a little more let's try 0 0.8 0 0.95 um that looks pretty good well like I said we're gonna do a, a bow so I'm gonna go ahead and apply that And what they did is actually kind of move these points down a little further and they're not all in one flat plane see you can see them other so that kind of helped out now we're going to come up here we're going to get rid of this point up here we're going to go to top view we're going to grab that point we're going to delete it so let me grab these we're going to do a alt e screwed edges um yeah then we're gonna drop it back down then we're gonna do a scale 
Oops, I gotta get rid of this proportional. We're gonna scale those back, those in to like here. I want to do a couple loop cuts here. Um, that, that's probably should be, be good. Now it's gonna be flat, and that's because we extruded it and scaled it in. But I'm gonna do a, a tab out, and we're gonna go over here again. I probably should have done this all one time instead of two different times. But like I said, I haven't done this before. So this is all new to me. Yeah, so this is all new to me. So now I'm going to cast this. We're going to go back to the point 0.9. See, it's round. Works out. Awesome. We're going to apply that. Tab back out. Now this middle is open, but that's fine. And then I'm going to grab this. Go to front view. And I'm going to grab this proportional editing again. We're going to go G, Z. I always forget which way to scroll to get what I want. Some the circles. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so scrolling away makes it smaller. And then I'm going to pull this up. So let's go to here. G, Z. G, Z. Just trying to make it look as smooth as possible because when I turn this back on it's going to look smooth. Um, I'm going to grab this loop. I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to scale this out to there. I think I'm getting the shape I want. Like I said, I'm going to end up grabbing this down here, do some proportional editing. GZ. Oops. I forgot you can't loop. You can't select like that. Um, working in Katia, I can, when you select across a solid, it grabs the faces in the front and back. So I kind of get used to it and I shouldn't. I should try to keep that separate. GZ. Let's go bigger. A little bit smaller. Let's stop there. We're going to go GZ again. We're going to go a little smaller. I didn't do the Z yet. There we go. And then we're going to let go. And then I want to grab this middle point right there. Go back to front view. And go GZ. Kind of doesn't have the look that I want yet. And one of the things you can do is you can come in, let's say from here, highlight all this and do F3 smooth. This one I've been finding very useful. And you want to find the one that says vertex. I guess control V is the shortcut for it. And you saw it twitch, but over here you can change this. And then I can tell it to repeat so many times. But I'm not going to repeat it more than once because I'm going to remove this row up here. And then I'm going to come down here and grab here. Do the same thing. And then I'm going to keep doing that by moving down. Um, I found this works. I, I think I, I learned this when I was making my potion bottle. And I'm skipping some. Oops, I missed. Alright, All right, then uh, I think I know I just made this round, but I think I might flatten this. Because I think it might be flat. So, SZ0. But then I'm going to grab... Let's go up one more. And we're going to do a smooth. And then this one will repeat us several times. And then I'm going to grab all this up here and do it one more time. 
Actually, we might do it less though. But it'll be it'll make it smooth. Okay, come up here. F3 smooth. There we go. Catch these three. F3 smooth. I think this area here has got too much of a sharp angle right on it. So I think I'm going to want to come through like this. Oh yeah, there it is. I'm going to file save. Save that. So now I want to put this point below this point. So I'm going to do it all GZ. The reason why I don't want to put it right on that point is because I want a straight part of the tube for a second. So we're going to go a little higher than that. To there. Then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do, do an ant modifier. Mirror. No clipping. Oh, I got to reset. Okay, so. What we do is come up. Pick the object, do object, apply all transforms, and then it resets your zero point to zero, since that's where I'm trying to mirror from. And there we go. I'm going to take this mirror and I'm going to stick it above the subdivide surface. And the reason I'm going to... So I'm trying to do this. And so in order to connect this, I just need to tab into it, because I have clipping on in the mirror. I can loop grab this. What I did was I hit Alt and clicked it to loop grab. Then I'm going to extrude in the Z direction until it connects. And that's your your loop. Now you see it's still kind of sharp and it, it kind of wouldn't be if you were extruding straight up. But the subdivide is shown. See it's, it is straight. And since the mirror isn't applied it didn't try to make it straight. I tried to do some weird whoop thingy. I'm going to also put another turn that off. Another little bend in here. That's, so when I do show the subdivide, it's a little more smooth transition. Alright. It's looking good to me. Now we need to give the glass some thickness. So I'm going to Hit A, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to wireframe so I can see it, and then I'm gonna do a Alt E, extrude faces along normals. I don't know if I needed to do that, and I'm gonna extrude it outward. I think that will keep it from flipping inside out. And I don't know how thick do I want the glass? Just a little bit. Let's just do it a little bit. Shift Z. Alright, let's set up some some lighting. A tab out. Shift A. Mesh plane. We're going to move this down. G, Z. You know, most of the time you want the, bottom, the, the coordinate to be at the bottom. But since we're mirroring everything, I'm just going to leave it in, a, in the middle. I'm going to scale this up by 10. I'm going to tab in, I'm going to extrude it in the Z. Just so we have some background to it. This is kind of like a backdrop. And then I'm going to tab back in because I tabbed out. And I'll delete the top and the two sides. Um, that's going to let the light in. If I do a zero, I'm way out here. So I'm going to hit N. Do this camera to view, which means if I scroll, it's the camera that's actually moving. Then you can pan around. This actually moves the camera physically in the scene. And then I click this, and now when I move, I come out of the view, and you can see the camera's box. We're going to hide the camera. Hit H to do that. All right. So we're going to hit World. So Color, Environment, Texture. So now I want to come down to Open. I have HDRs. And I have like some outdoor ones, but for stuff like this, when I'm just setting it up in the room, I like to do 
the soft lighting. So open that. Regular. I got these from Polygon. We need we need glass texture. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna file save. I'm gonna do a file open. And I have in my assets not in the, that assets. It's in where do I have it at? Reference folder? Nope. Okay, so in here I have Draco's textures. Alright, so in Draco's textures I have these textures that I make and so I can reference them later. And so I got this glass, this is a tabletop I made. Um it's got a glass texture that I really love that I have. I use for everything I use in glass. It's got some deep science in it that I picked up somewhere a long time ago and I can't remember. It was before there was a glass shader or it, it had a glass shader but the glass shader was garbage. kind of still is. Um, you see there's a noise texture in it that used to be used and it doesn't need to be used anymore. So now we just have the absorption because it absorbs light and the thicker the glass is the more green it shows. And to show you that you can see it in this edge here. So it's a, it's chamfered. It's really cool. It's a tempered glass. So I'm gonna grab this sheet of glass, go back to the hourglass, and then I do a control V. There it is. And then I'm just gonna delete it because I don't need it. After after you bring it in, the texture is in here. But you gotta apply that texture before you close. Why am I not getting the... There it goes. So I want to come up here. I want to go glass absorption. Now if I go to That's how it should look. And then it'll be kind of a weird shiny. I am going to go ahead and hide the background. All right. Now what we need to do is make the frame. And I think I'm going to do like a little rim of wood. I'm going to make the top almost the same as the bottom. I think I'll make all of it the same except for the very bottom baseboard will be bigger. Oh, you got to make them the same, right? Because you pick them up and you turn it, the whole thing over. So it's got to be the same from top to bottom. Um... Yeah, so what I could do is I'm going to do a shift A mesh and we're going to do a cylinder. Uh, I'm going to crank this up to 64. I just like to start off with something more round than trying to make it more round later. Um, the radius is 12 inches. That's a little big. We're going to go drop that down to 8 inches because our Bottles are roughly around six. Oh no, that's. I'm sorry. Our, our our glass is roughly around six diameter, so this needs to be about four inch radius. Um, the depth. We're just gonna make this uh, one inch. And let's go with half inch. And yeah, an end gone on the end, which means. A whole bunch of sides. If you did uh, nothing, it would be open. If you did a triangle fan, that just means a whole bunch of triangles, which I really don't like. So I'd rather have an end gun aligned with the world. Sounds good. Click, glab, <laughs> glab, grab, GZ. Bring that down to about there. Um, so your hourglass doesn't have to have all the sand showing in the bottom. I'll move it down a little bit more. So right about there. And what I should do is put a hole in the center, which isn't too difficult. I'm going to tab in. I'm going to take this top surface, get rid of it. I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to get rid of the bottom surface as well. And I'll show you what. 
Because if I come in here and I say ejectrude, extrude and then I right mouse click and put it back and I scale it, I can come down to about where I want. Let's come down about here for now. And then we're going to go to the front view because it'll be easier. Then I'm going to go to wireframe, shift Z. Then I'm going to do an extrude. I, I don't think I have it selected anymore. So reselect that, go to the front extrude Z. I'm going to bring this way up here because I don't know. I don't want it to be closed, so I want to be able to see it visually change. I am going to come over here with this vertex, bring up in this, and I'm going to look at the Z dimension. And the Z dimension is a quarter inch, which is very easy to remember. I'm going to loop select that by hitting Alt back on the edge, and then I'm going to change its Z to 0.25 and I s s did something wrong there I think I bumped the global 0.25 yeah so now I have it down here I can come out here and hit alt shift alt loop select nope I'm sorry I was about to do something really silly there it wouldn't have worked but we're going to do Shift Z so I can see. I'm going to tab out. I'm going to hide the glass for a second. I'm going to tab back into this. I want to close this. So all I need to do is pick one edge here and one edge over here that's in the same section. Hit F. And then after that I just hit the edge right here. And then I'm going to hold my F until it comes all the way around. F for fill. Okay. I'll Alt H, I'll tab, Alt H, bring the glass back in, I'm going to rehide this outside piece, I'm going to tab back into this guy, I'm going to go Control 7, so I'm looking at the bottom. Actually, let's look at it from a, a weird angle here. See, because I'm penetrating the glass with that edge, so I'm going to do a Control Z, so I can see. Maybe if I did a, yeah, one will help. I'm going to do a, a edge grab, and we're going to see where these dots are. We're going to hit Alt and click here so it goes all the way around. We're going to scale this till it comes past this line. We're actually going to keep it inside that. You know what? Let's keep it right where it's at. I'll tell you why. It's going to be kind of cool. We're going to hit Alt and grab this loop select all the way around. That loop is the inside top radius of this thing and then we're going to do a control B and we're going to bevel that as soon as I can find out where it's going to start working at and then we're going to make that line up kind of close to that glass don't don't make a hit but keep it away now it looks like it's cradling that glass right in there and you can see that right? you can't really see it here kind of see it over here but we'll be able to see it better later so it's not crashing it's not it's going to throw some reflections it's going to throw some stuff let's go ahead and look at this see if this is kind of what we want i think i'm going to bring this this diameter in so i'm going to hit s for scale and bring that in but i'm going to also hit shift z so I'm not scaling the Z direction. I'm going to pull that out about here. So basically that piece is designed just to cradle the first part. So we're going to come to the bottom here. We're going to do an Alt Select. We're going to do a front view and go E down 0.25. And then we're going to loop select this and do an Alt E. And we're going to do extrude along normals. We're going to come out 0.25. So we have all that fun stuff. I'm going to also alt loops like this. And we're going to dissolve that edge. We don't need those edges. All right. So we got this kind of shape. I want to come back up to the top here. I want to do an alt loop select control B. We're going to bevel that. Now, do we want to chamfer it? I think chamfer look better than round. Let's chamfer it. 
let's chamfer it like this. All right, so it's a nice chamfer, but I don't want this corner to be sharp, so I'm going to select that corner and that corner and do a control B again. And then I'm going to roll it till I get, I don't know, at least two, and then I'm going to shrink it back up, down small. So basically, it was chamfered, and then they sanded it, so there's no sharp corners. Because that's how things work in real life. There's no sharp corners. Probably grab the inside corner here and do a control B. And do a nice radius on there too. A nice little one, just like the top one. And that will show up on the glass refractions. Okay. So we're going to do, we're going to come in with another base in this you know what? I wonder if I should bring this down to the bottom of here. So let's do that. Like this. And then we're going to G, Z, down to there. Okay, we're going to select the bottom. And... I kind of want to have this close off. I don't want to open bottom. So I want to go to the front view, I want to go E to extrude. We're going to come down just a smidget like that. And then I want to come in here and I want to loop grab that and say fill. I want to come in here and I'm going to loop grab this and we're going to delete faces. Okay, so then we're going to come into this area, this one, edge select. We're going to say fill. All right, I need to get this down below here, which I must have undid by accident last time. So we're going to Shift Z, come across like this. We're going to go G Z to there, so it's below it. And then I'm going to undo that, and then I'm going to come in. I'm going to select this whole bottom again, but not just the bottom face. We don't want this top line. And then I'm going to G Z down point. Five negative. All right. You know, maybe I'll come up another. I'll come up a quarter inch. G Z. Point. Two five. I'm gonna select this outside edge here. I'm gonna make sure that bottom's not selected. I think it was selected. Select that. Alt E. Long normals. Come out. I'm gonna come out about point. Two five. All right, and that's the base. And I must not have. Oh, that's that's supposed to be there. We're going to fill this in. I don't know why it's not filled in. F. We're gonna be able to see this when it's on the top like this, but I don't want to. I don't want to see it at the moment. All right. So let's go ahead and do some contouring. Um, I think I'm gonna chant for this. Control B. You know, let's do this one round. So let's get some nice stuff going on there. I kind of want it to be kind of close to the next section. And then I'm going to do a loop cut on here. So when I do turn back on the sub, or when I do apply a subdivision, it doesn't radius this area. Because like right now, if I come over here and I say add subdivision modifier and I do this, it tries to round things out like an ice cream cone. Bloop, bloop. And in order to stop that kind of stuff from happening, and by the way, see how it's clipping? If you don't want to see that, if you want to see these lines be on the surface, click this guy. So in order to get rid of this roundness, 
because we don't want that roundness really. We're gonna come in here and do a control B. Well, not control B, control R for loop cut. We're gonna scroll that down and then we're gonna do it out here to get a more squared corner. And down here to get a more square corner. Actually, I'm not going to do it there. I'm going to go ahead and hide this. I'm going to do a loop select and then control B. There you go. I just want to do a chamfer to break that corner. I'm going to do that up here too. I'm going to to solve that we didn't need to do that there we're going to do this control b just break the corner a little bit because when i do turn the sub diversion subsurf modifier back on it's going to add looks like garbage though so we're going to do this a little different all right i am going to pick this one and this one i'm going to do control b and we're going to roll some corners in here. I'm going to control that smoothness. And I'm going to do a radius in here too. So I'm going to control B. If I want to... Okay, there's an extra loop in there. Control B. There we go. We want to control the size of this. We don't want the subsurf modifier to control this radius. And I think... I can do that up here too. So let's go ahead and get rid of this one and this one. Dissolve edge. Because if you're using a... Um, you can make this round. It'll be kind of easier to make it rounder if, when you're manufacturing something like this. So there we go. So... Object smooth shade. Dink. Let's add a um, mirror modifier. That's always about the, the Z, but we have to reset this uh, object, apply all transforms to get it to go up there. Yeah, looking nice. We can do some a neat thing where, yeah, this is round, but that pole that comes up, we can have a bow out, or we can have a little foot come out, or we just can make this bottom base bigger. So if I came in here, and did uh, let's see how would I want to select that I can do this I can do um, alt selects on all these it's going to be fun to texture We can just do a scale, shift Z, so we don't change the Z scale, and come out like that. So if you look at it from the side, there's a, a straight line here. You can have the rod right up against that, go straight up. We'll, and we'll probably just take it to the center. And we're going to want to do it in a um, 120 degree pattern. So we will tab out, do shift A, we're going to do a cylinder, I'm going to scale that down, we're going to G, Y, move it over here, to about there, we're going to look at it from 3, see it's almost on that line, I almost nailed it, what you really want to do is just do a grab on this surface, and then do a GZ, I'm going to bring this all the way down, G, Z. Move that till it pops out. Then I want to bevel it. Control B. Because we're going to pretend it's been like machined. And again, no sharp corners anywhere. See, the end can stick through now, but there's going to be like a little shadow around there. I mean, this is really small. So you, and it's not going to really matter because you're not going to look at it that close. And then I want to take this top face off because when I when I mirror it, 
using a mirror modifier. We don't want double surfaces inside something that shouldn't have any surfaces. So we're going to go mirror modifier. And since it's point still there, it should be good. I'm going to get the X out of there and do a Y. Or a Z, I'm sorry. We're going to keep these all in the same body. But I need now to take this and apply all the object stuff because it's off to the side, all transformations. And then I can tab into here, hit L, do a Shift D, drop it back down, to do an R. Z 120. Okay. <clears throat> All I did was rotate on its own axis because I need this to be set to 3D cursor. R Z 120. Shift D. Right click to put it back. R Z 120. And there. Looking good. I think what we'll do is we'll have this be a metal. Then this be wood. And then we'll put like a metal cap out here. That it sits on like little feet. So in order to do that, we're going to tab back into here. We are going to hit L. On this guy here, I'm going to do a shift D or move it over, right mouse click. I'm going to go GZ, move it down here. I will then select this top loop. I'm going to do a fill. I'm going to do a control B like that. I undid too many times. I'm just going to go to the front view and grab this and pull it up. So shift Z to get a wireframe. G Z bring this up. Make it like about that tall. Looks kind of cute. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go G Z. I'm gonna bring this up. And I'm gonna probably G Z. I'm gonna switch this over to individuals. I'm gonna scale. Shift Z. So I don't scale the Z. I want, it, I want it bigger than this, so it looks like it's a, a screw. And this is probably going to be like a, a bronze or brass. This can be bronze or brass too. Or maybe a, I had this nice red cherry copper. Ooh, it looks good. We'll use a rose something. We'll use that. So I'm going to select this. Shift D. G. Make sure this is back to 3D cursor. R. Z. 120. And then shift D, G, or right mouse click, R, Z, 120. And since the mirror modifier is still on, it's going to be on both sides. Tab out, shift Z. All right. And I think that's all we really need to do for our hourglass on the outside. Um, I'm going to do an Alt H, bring it in. I'm going to grab some wood texture for this real quick. Um, again, I use Polygon and I use their Polygon Material Converter. This is already set up. So all I need to do is go down to wood. And there's this really dark wood I, I really love. It's really nice. Unfortunately, there's no faster way to the bottom. I mean, I guess I could grab this and drag it. So let's see, wood... Is that wood beam? Wood fine. Wood fine dark. There it is. Hit the load and apply. I had this selected. Let's go back to this up here. I had that selected by accident. I need to come back and do the glass absorption on that. This one here, we gotta go down to metal. And with a steel blue. I love that too. I haven't had a use for it yet. But I grabbed it as soon as I saw it. Here it is. Rose brush. Look at that. We're going to load those materials. I'm sorry. Load and apply. 
like that. And then we're going to see what that looks like real quick. Um, just like that doesn't go with this. This era. So we're going to change that. Let's see, what is that called? Draco metal or some oil bronze. Switch the soda oil bronze. Oh yeah, I like that much better. Okay. We're gonna go with oil bronze on these. I'm gonna tab into this, I'm gonna get rid of these ones. And then we're going to do some loop cuts on this one. Or, uh, whatchamacallits. Seams. You don't really see that much change on these because these are not... I mean, it's a... Big old node for that texture. It's not a texture, it's not like an image. So now I'm going to grab these two. I'm going to do a Shift D. You know what? I'm going to undo that. Okay, so I'm going to do it in Control, or is it Alt D? Alt D? Yeah. Drop it back down. RZ120. Difference between a Control D and an Alt D is Control D duplicates. An Alt D copies it with attributes. So if I came in here, tabbed into this one, see this one kind of went into tab as well? Because this one, or if I'm going into this one, they, they all control each other. So if I change this one in any way, like made a twisty in here, the twisty would apply over here. So I'm going to grab those two and I'm going to do another Alt D. Drop it back down. RZ120. Alright. So now we need to do the wood. I am actually going to do a Shift H on this. Tab in. Okay, this wood needs a lot of love. So let's see. I 
I'm going to do this one up here. And then, of course, you still have to do the loop cut. A UV unwrap. It's really what I want to do this this one. I haven't done anything like this. Um, it's kind of hard to figure out. So let's do that one and this one. But I don't want to. Usually in a cylinder, you want a line to come up, but it, it has to be the same texture. We'll get this. Does that look right? Don't look at the inside here. This inside is, um, seems. Yeah, see now, see the grain, it goes with it. Oh yeah, that looks better. You know, it's kind of too dark, so we're going to change that. So we're going to change the name of the texture, too, because if I insert this into another file, I don't want it reading the texture. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And then I'm going to do a Shift-A um, color RGB curve. Yep. That one, I'm going to drop it right there. I do this all the time. It's pretty cool. Watch, I'm going to make it lighter. Come on. There we go. Look at that. That <laughs> looks much better. All right. I'm going to do an Alt H, bring everything back. Yes, that looks great. Real front view. I'm going to grab this outside box. I'm going to do GZ. Bring that up to the bottom of those. This is just for the image. Let's see, we're at an hour and 13 minutes. I can easily edit that down, I hope. Probably not. All right, so now we need sand. Oh boy. No, it shouldn't have took this long to do this, but. It is what it is. Tab into this. We're going to do an L on the outside. We're going to hide it. So we only have the inside. And then I'm going to do a grab on the glass here. I'm going to hide that. I'm going to do an L down here. I'm going to do a Shift D. I, I think I did a Shift C. Shift D. Now I have it. I'm going to right mouse click to bounce back down. I'm going to right mouse click and do a separate by selection. And then I'm going to do an Alt-H to bring all that stuff back. And then I'm going to tab out. Now I'm going to select the outside. Hide that. Select this. I'm going to come over and get rid of the mirror modifier. And then I'm going to hide. I'm going to select this down here again and go Shift-H. And we're going to work just on this. So one of the first things we need to do is we're going to have to close this top. So tab in, grab this, should see, we're going to grab this, we're going to do a, a scale. I know it's going up, but I'm going to do a shift Z so it doesn't. I'm going to go to here, I'm going to do a shift, an alt E, extrude edges, drop, shift, and yeah, do a scale, a shift Z. And go here, we're going to go GZ because we don't want it all the way down. I'm just trying to make a little pile. I don't, and I don't know how to do this because I have never done it. So we're going to do a scale again. Nope, we're going to do an extrude again. And then we're going to come in the E a little bit like here. And then we're going to do a scale, shift Z, come in, E. Come up, S, Shift Z, come in, E, C, come up, S, or Shift, or sorry, S for scale, Shift Z, but not Z, and then come in, 
to make it real close and I'm going to do it after close it. All right, so I need this to be sand. And the question is, do I have a sand texture? Also, this is inside out. So if I say face orientation is red, it should be blue. We're going to tab in. We hit A for all. We hit F3. We type in the word flip. And you get this flip normals, which is all N. I always forget that. I'm going to click that, and now it's blue. Tab out. Now we're going to take this and I'm going to come down to this bottom, which we won't ever see this bottom. I'm going to hit there and I'm going to do a mark seam. I'm going to do A, UV, unwrap. Okay, and then I'm going to tab out. And then this is glass right now. Um, we just flip it to material so it doesn't look weird. But I need to find a sand material. I need to also turn off this face orientation. So I'm going to come down here. It's, it's called beach sand. So i got to scroll down. Yeah, maybe it's sand beach. Yeah, sand beach clean. Load and apply. I never even clicked it, so now I just have to hit apply. And there is my beach sand. I'm going to do an Alt-H. Now you can't see it because the glass does this weird thing, so I'm going to... Now, major issue. Where surface touch surface, they never can decide which one is prominent, so you get this view that we have right here. This is the same with waters, the same with... Like, anytime you do a liquid in a in a glass you always have this problem so what i'm going to have to do is you need to ex you need to interfere and what it does is it helps with the caustics i think it's called and all that kind of stuff where pretty much you're eliminated in glass on the inside of the thickness of the glass so i'm going to do that now so to do that i'm going to hide the glass, I'm going to select my sand, and I'm just going to say scale, and go 0.0, I'm sorry, 1.01. .01. Let's go 0, 0, 1, and see if that helped. Alt H. Not necessarily the, the glass, or it going back and forth between them. All right, now one other thing I want to do is I don't like my sand. I think I need to come up more coned. So shift H, tab, proportional editing. I am going to come in here and grab this face and I'm going to do a GZ. GZ. Things like that would look good, right? Tab out. Oh, actually, we need to tab back into that. A. See, it's now oval. So I need to do UV unwrap. And I think I need to scale this up a bit. I think that looks good for sand. Um, now you see the blurring on it. Let's do, I don't know, I do have a subsurface on here. I guess if I wanted to make it look better, I can go download the higher resolution one. But we're not going to worry about it because we're never going to look at it that close. And if we ever did, we can just change it. I'm going to do Alt H. I don't know if you guys can hear, my wife is vacuuming. Right above my head. Alright. 
so I am going to get rid of this box out here. This bottle will be available for download with the whole tutorial. Um, you just got to go to the link below, uh, down to dracosocard.com. It should be in there. I'm also going to add the, I didn't last week, but I'm going to add in the, the desk, the, the alchemy desk. So you guys can look at that. So if you guys have any comments or anything, please leave that below. If you really like this, um, tutorial, please hit the like button subscribe if you want to see more right now in the wizard study we are doing a collection of alchemist tools for the next few weeks it's a 52 week project releasing videos once a week and hopefully i'm not going to stop i'm going to do the whole 52 weeks because i'm going to end up with a nice product also if you guys would like to help out with the end project you can submit realistic looking wizard objects i'm still looking for somebody to do a wizard for me i'm not good at people but we're going for realistic i'm not going for cartoony or low poly in this while some things can be low poly but have a realistic texture on it we're looking for something when you it gets done it's going to look real and if you want to check that out um I have a playlist with all the previous episodes in it. There's more than eight episodes in there because there's a couple side episodes. Um, like where do I get all my textures from? How do I use them? That kind of thing. And pretty much a commercial for Polygon. So if you like this, please smash that like button. Um, it really helps. Not in the way that most people say it. It helps me with, I guess you could say it's a motivational. I'm having fun doing it. It's taken a lot of my time to do it. So if you like this type of thing, please subscribe. 52 weeks. It is currently May 2nd of 2021. Week 9 of 52. So that's almost another year, pretty much. So that's it for this episode. Sorry it went over a half hour. That's uh, my target length. But this one went a little longer. And as always, stay creative.